Hello Legacy Kids, this is Ms. Sherry. I'm here to share with you today during your children's ministry lesson. I'm excited. I'm excited for a few things. To be here with you guys today is almost in the school year. I'm ready for the summer and just to have a little more time to relax and hang out. I hope you guys are making great plans with your parents and that you're looking forward to the end of the school year as I am. So let's get started this morning with our Legacy Kids Anthem. Loud and proud, confident. I am the apple of God's eye. I am blessed and highly favored. I am more than a conqueror. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am God's masterpiece. I am the head and not the tail. I am important to God. I am loved by God. I am protected. I am strong and courageous. My name is Sherry Searles and I am a child of God. Last week, Ms. Chantel discussed Mordecai and how Mordecai and Esther worked together to appeal to the king because Haman wanted to eliminate the Israelites. That means he wanted to get rid of them. He wanted to get rid of them because uh, Mordecai would not bow to anyone other than God. And Haman was angry about that. So Mordecai and Esther came up with a plan. And Mordecai asked Esther to go before the king on the Israelites' behalf in order to help them escape Haman's plan. And the whole people of Israel fasted for three days to call on God and ask him to help them. And that's what God wants from us. He wants when we're fearful, when we're scared, when we're not sure what to do, to come to him, to ask him for help, and then for us to wait and trust him to move on our behalf. So what was our memory scripture that taught us about that last week? Do you remember? It says, the Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Psalm 34, 22, what does it mean to take refuge? It means to go to a safe place. God is our safe place. And when we go to that safe place, we wait for God to move on our behalf. Sometimes we're waiting for God to tell us the next thing to do. Sometimes we um, are waiting for God to give us the, the patience that we need or the right words to say if we need to speak to someone or just sometimes just peace. We're just having a hard time. We just need peace. And God is our refuge. We can go to him and get everything that we need. So this week, we're going to talk about a new helper. Our new helper this week is Silas. And Silas was really important in helping spread the gospel to the Gentiles. He went on many evangelistic missions with Paul and Barnabas. And what I like that the Bible says about Silas is that he was a man of character. Okay, but before we get into talking specifically about Silas, we're going to talk about our memory scripture for the day. Because it really talks about how God will take care of us when we do his work. Okay, our memory scripture this week is from 2 Thessalonians 3.3. And it says, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. And this was very important when Paul and Silas and Barnabas were out on the mission field because they had a lot of resistance. People didn't like them. They didn't like the gospel. They didn't like them sharing the word of God. And they were casting out demons and, and, and speaking the gospel and speaking truth and teaching people about Jesus. And so they really needed to know that God would be their strength during their missions while they were teaching um, Christ. Because you have to remember, Christ is new in this time. Christ had come, he had ministered, he had lived a life, he had taught us, he had went to the cross, he'd come and spent time with his people and resurrected. And now the church is going out, the apostles are going out, and they're preaching and they're teaching the gospel to those who have not heard. And everybody didn't like that because sometimes it went against what they already believed. Sometimes it hurt their feelings, just like sometimes when we read the scriptures and we learn things about ourselves, we're like, oh, that hurt. Oh, I don't like that. You know, and sometimes we rebel, and sometimes we're quick to listen and obey. So that was what they were doing. They were out spreading the gospel, telling people about Christ. So we're going to talk about Silas and how he helped Paul and Barnabas, but I want to talk to you first about his character. What the Bible said about Silas's character. In 2 Peter 5, 12, it says, With the help of Silas, whom I regard as a faithful brother, 
I have written to you briefly, encouraging you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. This is Peter when he's writing to the Gentiles because he is responsible for letting people know who Jesus is. That's one of his main jobs. He was there to let people know who Jesus is, but he needed help. He needed the other apostles and disciples to go out and minister to people and share the good news of the gospel and pray for people and teach them how to live right. So he, people went out to different places of the world because we remember in Matthew 28, Jesus commands us to go out to all the phases of the earth, to the far reaches of the earth, spreading the good news, sharing the gospel of Christ. And that's what they were doing. And when Peter was sending Silas out, he sent a letter. And he talked about Silas' character. He says he's a faithful brother. That's very important because when people are faithful, we can trust them to do the work that they're called to do. We can trust them to them to see things all the way through. They're not going to do it a little bit, but not all the way. They're going to do it to completion and they're going to do it perfectly. He's a faithful brother. What would your friend, how would your friends describe you? Would they describe you as faithful? Do they know that you're dependable, they can count on you? Do your siblings know they can count on you? Do your parents know they can count on you to be faithful with the responsibility that you've been given? You, this is a major task for Silas. He had to go out and spread the gospel. You gotta think about it. They didn't have cars and trains and airplanes. They walked a lot. They, they rode horses. They had very, very slow ways of transporting the gospel. But he was committed to it. He was faithful. Peter knew that he can trust Silas to spread the gospel. Another scripture we're going to look at is in Acts 15, 22. And this is when they were trying to choose who to send out with Paul and Barnabas. What's happening here in the background, let's, let's do a little context first. Okay, so... People were holding Gentiles to certain rules. They were saying, you have to do this to follow Jesus, and you have to do this. And if you don't do this, you're not right. If you don't do this, and they were like, this is not right. That is not Christ. There's a new covenant, and we cannot hold the Gentiles, who they were talking about, I'm sorry. They were trying to tell the Gentiles they had to do certain things in order to be Christians. And they got the apostles got together and was like, no. That's not right, because we know that the Jewish people had customs. They had customs in the Old Testament where God gave them rules to follow so they could be different and separate from the rest of the world. So there were certain things that they could not do and certain things they had to do in order to be separate from the world. When Jesus came, he says, I give you a new covenant. And that doesn't mean we don't obey the Old Testament. But we're not bound to being those laws that make us separate because Jesus is what makes us separate now. Loving Jesus, accepting Christ, taking on his character, that's what makes us separate now. Okay, so they were trying to choose men to go out and say, we need to go teach the Gentiles the right way. This is not the right way. So who are we going to send? Paul and Barnabas were going out and they said, we need to choose men to go with them. And so this is what Acts 15, 22 says. It says, Then the apostles and elders with the whole church decided to choose some of their own men and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They chose Judas, Carbosabas, and Silas, men who were leaders among the believers. Do you see that second characteristic? Silas was a leader among the believers. That means he stood out. Peter talked about him being a faithful brother, but... So did the other brothers. They saw that he was a faithful brother. He was a leader. I mean, he was strong. He was courageous. He was kind. He was forceful. He was firm. He was loving. You need all of those characteristics to be a leader among people. So I want to think, I think about his character and I'm like, they thought about it. They thought about who Silas was as a person and that he was a faithful brother. He could be trusted and that he was a leader. And so they sent him out to do the work of the ministry. And so they go out and they do this great work. They take the letters to the Gentiles saying, no, these are not the things that you need to adhere to, but these are the things you need to adhere to. So this is all coming from 
um, Acts 15. It's a long chapter. And then we're going to go into Matthew 16, which is a long chapter. So read those with your parents. Okay? So they go out and they do the ministry and they go to different places. And they're reading the ministry. And then later, Paul and Silas are put in jail. They're imprisoned. Because the Jews are upset that they are teaching the Gentiles how to live. And they're telling them that they do not have to adhere to all of these rules and regulations for separation because Christ is what makes us separate. Christ is what makes us sacred. Christ is what sanctifies us, not rules and regulations. And the Jews did not like it. And so they made false accusations against Paul and Silas and they went to prison. But the Bible tells us when they got to prison, they pray, they sing hymns, and they praise God, and they sing songs. And I want to be, think about what we talked about Silas being faithful. Silas could have left Paul. He could have said, nope, I don't know him. Paul did that. I had nothing to do with that. But he was a faithful brother. And so he still stayed with Paul even when they were in prison. And they still worshiped God. And they still honored God with their lives. And the word, Bible says they sang songs and the, the, the prison shook and the, the doors came unlocked. Okay? And the prisoners were scared because they thought they had escaped. And they're like, no, we had escaped. We're still here. And they praised God. And you know what happened because of their faithfulness? The prisoners, not, I'm sorry, the, not the prisoners, but the guards came to know Christ. And not only did they come to know Christ, but they went home and shared Christ with their families. And their families began to know Christ. And they were baptized. And they became disciples of Christ. That was the mission. The mission was to go out and spread the gospel no matter the circumstances. And I know that's a very hard teaching when you're 5 and 12. But that's the call. And I'm sure most of you would never, be able, never probably have to go to prison for your faith. But sometimes at school, it might not be popular to say what's right. But God still expects you to say what's right. Sometimes at home, it might not be popular. Your sister or your brother may not want to hear it, you know, to say what's right. But God's expecting you to be a faithful servant. We need you to be a faithful brother or sister in the faith. Because we all work together to advance the kingdom, to spread the gospel, to teach people about Christ. Are you a faithful servant? Are you a leader among believers, among your peers, among your siblings? Are you a leader? How are you being helpful? That's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be helpful to others. How are you choosing to be helpful? We all are helpful in different ways, and we all have to be mindful. And being helpful means being intentional. That intentional means doing it on purpose. Are you being helpful on purpose? Silas was helpful on purpose. And because he was helpful on purpose, people came to know Christ. Read through Acts 15 and Acts 16 with your parents. And ask them questions about all that happened. Because it was, it was a lot of information. It's a lot we can learn from Silas' example and Paul's example um, of being faithful, even when it's hard. I want to be called a faithful sister. I want my sisters and brothers to say, Sherry is a faithful sister. And that she's a leader. Not because I want to brag about it, but because I want to live a life that honors God. And if I want to live a life that honors God, I have to take on the characteristics of Christ. Christ is faithful. And Christ is a leader. So if I want to be like Christ, then I have to be faithful. And I have to be a leader. And the same goes for you. So I pray that you guys have a wonderful week. I pray that you're excited. School's almost over. The summer's almost here. You guys have done an excellent job with your e-learning and staying focused and staying engaged. And I know it's been hard, but you guys have been faithful in this. You guys have been determined in this. You have been consistent in this. And I am super proud of you guys and all the effort that you put forth in your e-learning experience because it was a huge um, transition and it was a quick transition. You guys didn't have a lot of time to prepare. So I'm super proud of you. I hope that you guys have a wonderful week. We'll have a week and a half left. Um, finish out the year 
and a tremendous, tremendous amount of work and engagement. Make sure you thank your teachers for all the work they put in to making this a great experience for you. I love you guys. I miss you guys so much. I'm hoping that soon we can come back together. Have a wonderful week.